I have mentioned that I camp year round to a few folks and they all say the same thing. I would love to get into winter camping, but I don't have the gear and I don't have the know-how. Why would you go out there and freeze when you can sleep in your bed? I'll tell you right now, I come out here, I don't like being cold either. I prepare so I'm not cold and I get great satisfaction of it being below freezing and I can be nice and dry and comfortable in a shelter that I have made out here in the bush. That gives me, you know, a great feeling to be able to do that. There are a few things though that you have to remember and always be cautious of. Now winter camping can be dangerous, deadly even, if not done properly. Now, I'm going to give you a few tips that can help with this, but if you're new into winter camping, I suggest you do it in a safe environment. Don't go way out back in the woods where if you start getting cold, you have to spend the night. Be in an area where you can walk out if you have to. Always think safety first. This is for fun and for an experience. Don't risk your life out here. These temperatures in the winter around here can kill you. So I want to put that out right now. That's a warning. Always think safety. Now, the biggest thing out here, you want to stay dry. And a lot of that is the way you dress. That there is going to help keep you dry. And dress in layers so you can stay at a comfortable cold. You feel yourself sweating? Peel off a layer. You don't want to get wet from sweat or from the snow. I usually wear either rain pants or Gore-Tex pants if there's a lot of snow. That I can kneel right down and do what I want to and such. But if you don't have that, be very cautious about how you work. Now this here is some of the gear I take, and this is minimal gear, but this is what I normally take when I go out here camping. I camp in many different ways, but this here can give you an idea of what you can use. So the most important thing is keep dry. And some temperatures you know, you can get frostbite very, very fast. You really have to know this stuff. If it's getting down to those temperatures, you have to be totally covered up, and that's a whole nother playing field. So, I'm not going to get into that. Do your research. But, you want to be dry, and I usually come out here with a sleep system that I don't have to have a fire to stay warm. I'll check the weather network and see what their prediction is. And I don't go by that. I usually bring a sleep system that can go far below what they say, just in case they're wrong. That way there, I'm nice and comfortable throughout the night and I don't have to worry about freezing or getting hypothermia. I always bring a sleep system that goes far beyond that. And I'm not dependent on a fire. Although, if it's too cold and my sleep system still is not doing it, I can start a fire and keep warm with that while I'm using a sleep system. So, there's different ways that you can do it. But, I don't keep a fire going all night. I depend on my sleep system. Okay, what I'm going to do now is we're going to open this up. And first thing I have is a 6 by 8 poly tarp. What I use this for is a ground sheet. I throw this right on top of the snow and I can tack this down in the four corners if I want because when you throw this in the snow it's like a crazy carpet 
you'll just slide. You know, you step on that, you'll go for a slide. So you can pin down the four corners. After you stamp down the snow, you want somewhat of a solid base to lay this on. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay it like that so I can kneel down on it. Now that's going to work good. But the 6x8 tarp, it works great. I can fold it in half for one person. So it's a 3x8 or I can fold it so it's a 4x6 tarp. But if I had two people, I can put it right out to the 6x8. Now this is very important. I'll take my sleep pad that I did not bring out here today, but the sleep pad, I will roll that out on top of this here and then put my sleep system on that. The sleep pad keeps me from getting cold from underneath. Very important. The tarp kind of waterproofs the ground and the sleep pad will keep you warm underneath. Otherwise, the snow will suck the body heat right out of you. You can't throw a sleeping bag right on top of the snow and try to sleep on it because most times that snow, you'll wake up just shivering. So you do not want to sleep directly on the snow, even with a tarp. You need a sleep pad, something underneath of you to hold your heat in and block that cold out from the ground. In the winter time as well, you usually have to carry bigger bags just because of your sleep system. I don't have a whole lot in here different than what I take in the summer. Besides, my sleep system is a lot bigger. So, I usually take a 9 foot by 12 foot poly tarp. Same material or basically as this. That's what I've used for years. Although I have the one Tigris 10 foot by 10 foot sil nylon tarp. So either one you can take. This is for my shelter. You can set it up many different ways. That's up to you. You can put it into a lean to, you can put it into a A frame, whatever you like that is going to keep any wind off of you. If it snows, it keeps the snow off of you. Or if it even starts freezing rain, it will keep you dry. That's what you use a tarp for. So I just got this one that I've been using since it's so compact. It's a very nice tarp. Now, you can also go with a hammock out here. I do that a lot as well. I put a sleep pad right in my hammock and use a tarp over top. The same setup I would use in the summer, but I have a larger sleep system. That's the only difference. Now in here, the sleep system I have is, well, <laughs> it fills up right up to here. And what it is, is the Canadian military sleep system. I'm going to just pop this open. And I can show you right from the front here. Canadian military sleep system. Fills all that up. It's got two down bags in it, a Gore-Tex bivy, and even a hood that you wear over your head to keep the cold out. This is rated for minus 40 when it's new. Minus 50 as well Celsius. Minus 40, minus 50. I've been in it minus 30 and I've been warm. So that's all I have in here. This sleep system and a tarp and a hammock in this pouch. But it takes up basically the whole inside of this bag. So that there 
is my sleep system. I put the ground sheet down, I have a cover for over top of me, and a sleep pad, as well as a good sleep system that's going to get me down far below the temperatures that I'm going to be out here. So that there is a sleep system. Now, I also bring out my flare gun. This is not a necessity. I just have it for safety reasons. I bring that out with me and it takes up no weight, no room. Now, I also have a small piece of tarp here. This one here I can put down for kneeling down, for sitting, for putting my boots on, and so on. It just comes in very handy. It takes up no room. And no, there's no weight to it. I also bring out a good buck saw. Now, this buck saw, I can cut down some pretty big logs if I need to. If I need to make a fire, you know, in the middle of the night. But I usually have a fire just for bushcraft TV, anyhow. Just for the fun of it whenever I go camping. And this pouch here, I have one liter of water. That's all I bring out here usually in the winter. I have one liter that I'll drink out of. Any cooking or anything like that, I'll get fresh snow. Or I'll dig down and get some good clean snow from underneath. And I'll bring that, I'll melt it, bring that to a boil and use that for water. I don't carry any more water than that. Now on this side pouch here, what I have, this here is some bandanas, a pouch full of bandanas for cleaning my pots and such after I cook. So, right here is my pot set. This here is a Sierra cup I use for a lid. I got a titanium spork actually for Christmas. And that's a one cup measuring cup that I carry. It takes up no room and it's good for different meals and such green cup from the Stanley Cook kit and this here is the canister stove the stainless steel can or excuse me the canister pot that I made stainless steel canister pot that I did a video a long time ago and I'm still using that pot I love it so I put this in here like this I'll put this in here like that And then shove it inside the bag. That's my cook system. So that there is my cook system. I got a pot, something to eat out of, and I got something to clean my pot and utensils afterwards. So I got a sleep system, I got a cook system, and as you see here, just some ferro rods and a can opener, just some extras. Now in here, I have my food, different foods, my cordage, a bag full of different things. Uh, I have bank line, I got paracord, various different types of cordage. So I have a bag of that. And then, I have a spare pair of socks, I've got another hat, I've got a necker, pair of leather gloves for working around a fire in hot pots and such, plus a thin pair of cotton gloves for the cold. So I've just got some extra gear for that and then I have a this here I've been using a long time 
and I'm loving this. This is a Sunjack light stick. It still works great. This is a product that I would recommend to anybody. I leave this on at night so I can see to be able to get up, do the things I need to, or if anything comes into camp. So I leave that on and it lasts 40 hours on a charge. So on low, it works really sweet. This here is the Thrunite C2 battery bank that I take as well for my cell phone because I always take my cell phone just in case. So that's it besides right here. And this is the Thrunite headlamp. So I've got lighting, which is very important out here. A spare battery and the TH20 headlamp plus the light jack. So that is it. I've got a sleep system, I've got shelter, I got cooking, I've got a light source, and some extra clothes and some cutting tools. I always carry my knife, my saw, and I stay out here in low temperatures and love it. You don't need a whole lot of gear, but the gear you bring out here, you want to be good gear. And just always remember, you got to stay dry, you got to stay warm. And dress for it and prepare with a good sleep system. Don't depend on a fire to keep you warm. Because a fire can go out or whatever. Don't depend on it. Always have something that you can use that you don't have to depend on fire. If you want fire, sure, but don't ever depend on fire because it can cost you your life. That's just my opinion, but I bring something out that I'm never fire dependent, but I could also, if I wanted to sleep with a fire, I sure can, but I don't have to depend on it. My life doesn't depend. So I hope some of these tips may help, and there's going to be a part two. I'm going to take this gear, I'm going to show you how I do it on a camp out. Thanks for watching.